So the channel is facing um, plenty of challenges right now. Um, and in terms of the ones that impact Nebulon as an organization and clearly working with some of those partners, how would you characterize that, you know, the main ones that you're seeing at the moment? Well, so what we hear back, Phil, from channel partners continually is they're always trying to differentiate themselves in what is a very, you know, it's a very tight market. And, um, you know, there's plenty of solutions that, you know, a lot of partners work with the hyperscale cloud companies and they work with cloud offerings. But in the on-premise environment, it's still a very highly competitive market and they're always looking for differentiation. And, and in truth, you know, the... Um, the on-premise market is vibrant and it's alive and it's well. You know, there's a lot of very successful companies selling uh, infrastructure on-premise and, uh, and within that world, looking for differentiation can be really quite hard to achieve. If you, if you think about the hyper-converged environment, uh, it's uh, hyper-converged solutions, it's largely dominated by two players and everyone is, 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 selling, that, is, is selling that platform and the the storage companies are pretty much, you know, with one or two exceptions, pretty much the same ones that have been around for an awful long, an awful long time now. And the same with networking and uh, and servers. So differentiation is hard to find. And, and you know, Nebulon, we offer we offer differentiation there, which we can touch on in a minute. Um, customer partners are looking to engage in the recurring revenue model as well, um, particularly, um, you know, partners and distributors that are publicly traded, you know, recurring revenue is seen as highly valuable. It's highly beneficial to customers and it's very sticky, which is one of the, the advantages to it. But it, but they, they're they looking to be able to sell recurring revenue platforms um, uh, 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 as well. And that that really is the model that we, we come to market with as, uh, as Nebulon, where a software as a service delivered cloud control plane. And what we do is we take the benefits of uh, and the, the lessons learned, if you will, from smart infra you know, smart devices that you have all around your house, um, whether it's um, PCs, uh, smart TV, smartphones, Tesla cars, all these sorts of things. Um, we're taking those benefits and applying them to the data center. So you get that immediate time to value, that really simple operating model that customers like. So you can now have it for your infrastructure on premise as well as, uh, as, well as in the cloud. And that gives, you know, that gives um, partners the opportunity to engage in, uh, uh, in a highly differentiated business model uh, and a new technology that is a new technology that's coming to market now. Before we move on to development at Nebulon itself, be good to know, I ask most folks this, the pandemic, I guess two things, the impact maybe on Nebulon as an organisation, whether you've had to sort of respond to you know, the different things that have been going on and also for the channel and their customers, uh, have the, uh, their demands, expectations, etc. Just some sort of thoughts as to what changes you may or may not have seen. Well, I, I mean, I think that one of the commentaries that you've heard, um, we've heard continually through the pandemic, which we would definitely um, uh, concur with, is, is that it, in many ways it hasn't changed much, but it's accelerated an awful lot. So there's an awful lot of technology today and companies today that have benefited enormously. And, and these are the companies, if you look at them, I mean, they're very cloud orientated. They, they drive far less human interaction. They simplify technologies they drive efficiency and flexibility into people's work environments and uh, and um and that that's been very much a continual theme and, and that in many ways benefits uh nebulon because that's exactly what we do we're a cloud control plane um that sits in the public cloud that manages zero touch on-premise infrastructure that's installed installed at the oem uh, our oem partners when they when when the product is sold along with their along with their servers so so we reduce that human sort of uh, interaction in data centers and everything is done and managed remotely which is which is very powerful and very much aligns with um what we've been hearing in terms of um uh in, in terms of the commentary app if you will around uh, uh, uh around covid uh, as far as us as a company is concerned there are some things that we've had to do differently in terms of how we really get in touch with customers and connect with them and the same with partners as well. And parts of it has might have slowed us down a little bit and other bits have accelerated us if, 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 I'm really, uh, if I'm really honest about it. It's been an interesting journey trying to launch and build a company at this point in time and build uh, a global, global business. I mean, we've either got our timing spectacularly right or spectacularly wrong, depending on how you want to, uh, how you want to look at it. But the signs are that we've got it right in the, you know, we're now post that startup phase, we've launched our product, 
and our platform earlier in the earlier in the year we've got um, our partners um, up and running with our smart partner program we've got our initial partners and we've also got our, our initial customers so we're at revenue now and um, and we're looking to accelerate okay so you, you've mentioned there what we're the, the sort of main reason for today's discussion so the smart partner program I guess um, any sort of reason why you're launching it now just because it's you know it was always in the plans or has anything changed or the so yeah I guess the reason for the launch and then the high level view of to what what it is that the program um, you know contains so um, the reason for the launch is super simple um, we are we go to market now um, as I said we've got customers and we've got partners um, we are um, we do not sell direct to customers we have an incredibly simple model uh, in terms of how we how we go to market uh, we go to market with our OEM partners um, uh, Supermicro, Lenovo and HPE and we go to market with their pathways and with their partners and so what we are not doing um, is selling to customers directly. And we're also, as part of that, not recruiting our own channel pro to our own channel program, where we sign up partners uh, in that, uh, sort of that traditional robust way in which we would go out and build a massive global sales and um, SE organization, as it were, and then go and sort of layer um, and go to market with partners on top of that. We've chosen to specifically go to market with our, uh, with our OEMs. And that's because we're an, an embedded platform in a server, um, and um, and so we need to be partnering with the the server OEMs as we go to market. And that the point at which the servers are bought is the point at which Nebulon is bought uh, bought as well. Um, and um, and so what what the smart partner program is is basically a mechanism by which we can accelerate the excitement around Nebulon and accelerate our go to market by working with the pathways and partners of uh, uh, of the OEMs that we. Um, the, that we work with. So um, there are two elements to it. Uh, the, there's the smart start element, which is essentially a seeding program. It encourages customers for their initial deployment to be able to participate in Nebulon and, and do it in a slightly lower risk way. Um, uh, and, um, and then there's the smart, report, smart rewards program, which has got three tiers to it, which basically it's actually a very margin rich, uh, if you will, or reward rich um, program that allows you the more that you sell the more that you can get by way of rebate uh, from uh, from Nebulon so it's really just designed as a stimulus program is, is all it is it's very very light touch as is with our customers because if you think about the benefit for customers to this route to market it's um, it's that they buy through their existing contracts through their existing partners and OEM so when it comes to doing business with us we're not in we're not saying to you, you know, you've got to sign contracts with us. They don't need new pathways. They don't need legal contracts and all these sorts of things, which you would have if we were trying to build a direct business and a direct model. All that is done in conjunction with your existing partners and your existing OEMs, which gives customers tremendous confidence in terms of how they can adopt a new technology in, you know, in, in, in a completely non-threatening way and allow them to buy perhaps a little sooner than they otherwise would. And it just in, interesting in that business model. So, would you anticipate then that the OEMs you um, outlined will give you a big enough sort of pipeline, or could you imagine a scenario where other channel companies might think, "I like the idea of what Nebulon's offering, therefore I'm going to you know go along to one of those companies you've mentioned and knock on their door and say, can I you know engage with you?" Or as I say, do you think your community is already you know established with those OEMs and and that's it? Well, I th I th it's a great question, actually. The, um, if you think about the number of partners that are already today selling, you know, um, Supermicro and Lenovo and HPE, you know, I mean, there's a there's a vast base of partners out there that now can get access to to Nebulon and this an innovative technology. Um, uh, and uh, there may be some partners that aren't engaged with these um, server OEMs that would want to and wants to get involved with selling Nebulon. So that's good all around for everybody. Um, but, but what we give the existing partners is access to a, uh, to a wallet share that they may otherwise not have. We give them access to a margin model and a differentiated revenue model that they may not have uh, today. And we give them a really nice and, you know, a really interesting competitive advantage in the, in the market with a, with a new technology that's based on a number of really key trends that are going on in the marketplace today. I mean, one of, one of the big things that is is happening is we're starting to see the emergence of the discussion around what really should live in the cloud and what 
what shouldn't has been a number of papers and recent Harowitz recently published a paper that talked about the market opportunity for the on-premise data center data center business uh, and in fact you know that lined up perfectly with a conversation that we've been engaged with recently with a, one of the major New York banks when they're talking about the fact that you know everyone is trying to sell them what they need to do in the cloud and cloud solutions but the reality is that's not the big problem that they've got the big challenge that they have is the the um, uh, modernization of their existing infrastructure and making sure that they're managing uh, their costs for their on-premise uh, environments because there's an awful lot of data that can't go to the cloud simply for cost and compliance reasons and it's a increasingly a revolving uh, a revolving door uh, in terms of some applications moving to the cloud but other applications coming back and this presents a perfect environment for a single operating uh, model if you will a business model across the cloud and on on premise infrastructure and engaging in that the, the the partner communities very often in the business advising customers as to what data sets and applications um should go to the cloud and what should retain re, re, you know remain on premise and and as a consequence you know they've now got a, a a a much simpler solution that they can talk to that they can talk to their customers about. You, I noticed you had Island Cloud on recently. You were interviewing those guys, and they were saying very much the same thing, but from a slightly different perspective in that they are a cloud company, but they were talking about the cost association with getting it wrong by putting the wrong applications and the wrong data sets in the cloud, and that very much their business was in helping their customers understand that. So it's very much on trend, if you will. Um, and. Clearly, there are one or two other sort of server manufacturers. So are the ones you've engaged with, do you anticipate that that's it? Or over time, may you, you know, sign up partnerships, deals with, with some of the other folks? I, I would imagine over time we'll, we'll, we'll be doing business with more um, server OEMs. I mean, you know, we, like I said, we're, we're post startup and we're trying to drive, um, you know, continue to, to grow our customer base as it is. So we've got more than enough uh more than enough on the go at the moment but but i think that if you think about how servers are are bought and how customers think about um servers it's almost inevitable that we'll participate with more server vendors over time and there's also some geographical markets where that that would work and make an awful lot of sense as well as we as we scale the nature of our platform is it's you know it's, it's um uh, as I say, it's a recurring SaaS model based out of the cloud. It's very easy for us to enter new markets and go to um, uh, uh, new customers and partners in, uh, in in different economies around the world. Okay, and maybe as, as we wind up, I mean, during the conversation, you've sort of alluded to various things going on in the organization. Just how would you characterize life since since the launch? As you said, the, yeah, the pandemic's had some good things, bad things, but I, I mean, overall, would, would you think you're you as an organization are pleased with the progress you've you've made thus far or um, any any things on on the roadmap that we need to be aware of or no i um i well i mean from a roadmap perspective you know we've got a tremendous amount of development really in in our um uh the cloud can the nebulon on cloud control plane which is where all our innovation really lives i mean we've, we've got a, a services processing unit which is a, a focused on data management it's a dpu like uh, pcie card that that is um focused on data management and and data storage but i mean to be clear we're not a storage company we don't sell storage the server oem would be selling storage in the host that we um uh that that, that we work with um and so that you know we we're, we our pedigree is engineering we're based in silicon valley and also um in seattle so so we'll be bringing more and more feature set to uh, uh to market and it's already a um a feature rich um feature rich platform i think that the um you know the fact that we are you know through a pandemic the fact that we're having a conversation is incredibly positive in the in that we must be doing something uh, must be doing something right to get to the stage where we've got customers and revenues and uh, that you know we're a well-funded company um and uh and that's that's uh, that's enormously positive from here it's all about how you ramp at scale and i think that the um the you know the the trends in the market around cloud control planes around consumer electronics around dpus and and all the conversations that people are having seem to be pointing uh, in our direction and adding a little bit of fuel to what we're doing at the moment. So I think that's really positive. And, and also we've seen that within our partner engagements, it has been very, very positive for the partners as well. 
uh, and um, and and they, you know, once they start to engage and they can see the market access that they get and working with a differentiated solution like this, that it's very exciting, very exciting for them. It's a very sticky technology uh, and um, uh, and one which the partners so far that we've been engaged in have really enjoyed um, participating in and selling. Okay, well, it's been great to chat to you, Tim. So uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers, Talk soon. Take care.